This section of the second grade addition and subtraction unit focuses on subtracting using linking cubes with and without regrouping. For this section of the unit, you will need linking cubes, place value charts, and number lines. The problems presented in this section of the unit are separating problems. Separating problems involve action and describe situations in which quantities are being separated from an initial quantity. The action occurring in the problem takes place over time and the initial quantity is decreased. For separating problems, there are three quantities involved, an initial start amount, a change amount, which is the part being separated, and the resulting amount, which is the amount remaining after the change takes place. For this section, the result will be the focus. Refer to the join separate word problem structure posters. Let's look at a real world scenario where a two digit number is separated. Nevaeh is helping put away her baby brother's toys. He has 47 toys that need to be put away. Nevaeh put away 15 of the toys in a box. How many toys does she have left to put away? Using the place value chart, we will represent the toys that Nevaeh needed to put away at the start using linking cubes. There were 47 toys, so we'll represent that with four tenths and seven ones. We'll need to separate linking cubes to represent the toys that Nevaeh has already put away, which is 15. We'll begin by separating our ones from the starting amount. Five ones should be separated. Now we'll need to separate the 10 from the starting amount. One, 10 is separated. Using the linking cubes, we can see that 15 was separated. There are three tens and two ones that are left. Nevaeh has 32 toys left to put away. Students will use linking cubes on a number line and pictorial representations to represent subtraction without regrouping. Here's a real world scenario. Liam has 37 cards in his collection. He gave his best friend 12 of his cards. How many cards does he have now? The starting quantity of 37 should be represented on a place value chart using linking cubes. Then a pictorial representation should be made on the recording sheet. Then the linking cubes are moved to the number line. We've represented the starting amount of 37 on the number line. We're also going to record that on the recording sheet. 10. 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. To represent separating the cards that were given away, 12 linking cubes are separated from the number line. So there's two, and then I'm going to separate 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. After I separate 12 linking cubes from the number line, I can see that the result is 25. I'm going to model this on my number line on my recording sheet. I'm going to separate 2, 1, 2, that's 35. Then I'm going to separate 10, that's 25. In my pictorial representation, I'm going to model separating the two ones and the one ten, and again, the result is 25. Liam has 25 cards now. 37 minus 12 is 25. Please note that students can be flexible in how they represent values on a number line. Here's another example of how 12 could be separated from 37. I know that 12 can be decomposed into 7 and 5. First, I'm going to separate 7, so I'm 37, I'm going to separate 7, then I'm going to separate 5 more on my number line, 
that will again give me a result of 25. Let's look at how students can use linking cubes to represent subtraction with regrouping. Here's a real world scenario. Katie baked 30 donuts for the school's bake sale. She sold 14 donuts. How many donuts does Katie have left? Katie's starting amount of donuts should be represented using linking cubes on a place value chart. There are three tens and zero ones. There are 14 donuts that need to be separated because they were sold. Students should recognize that 14 can be represented with one ten and four ones. We need to separate four ones, but there are zero ones on the place value chart. After students notice that four ones cannot be separated from zero ones, they will need to regroup. To regroup, one ten should be decomposed into ten ones. Now there are two tens and ten ones represented on the place value chart. Now that we have regrouped, four ones can be separated from the ten ones. One ten can be separated from the two tens. We've separated 14 to represent the 14 donuts that were sold. We can see that there's one ten and six ones left on the place value chart. Katie has 16 donuts left. Now students will use linking cubes to represent subtraction with regrouping and they will create a pictorial representation to represent the subtraction. Here's a real world scenario. Hooter had 40 dog treats. She ate 13 of her dog treats. How many dog treats does Pooter have left? The starting amount of dog treats should be represented with linking cubes on a place value chart and a pictorial representation should be made. With our linking cubes, we're gonna represent four tens and zero ones. And in our pictorial representation, we'll do the same. When we ask students what changed, they should recognize that Pooter ate 13 dog treats. There are 13 dog treats that must be separated. Students should recognize that 13 can be represented with one 10 and three ones. We need to separate three ones, but there are zero ones on the place value chart. After students notice that three ones cannot be separated from zero ones, they will need to regroup. One 10 can be decomposed into 10 ones. Now there are three tens and ten ones represented on the place value chart. We're going to represent the regrouping in our pictorial representation. We're going to show that we're regrouping one ten and decomposing it into ten ones. Now that we've regrouped, three ones can be separated. One ten can also be separated. Here we've separated the 13 dog treats that Pooter ate, and we can see on our place value chart there are two tens and seven ones remaining, the result. On our pictorial representation, we have the same thing, two tens and seven ones. Using either the place value chart or the pictorial representation, we will see that re the result is 27. Pooter has 27 dog treats left. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Elementary Math Minutes. We hope you'll find these videos helpful and we look forward to you joining us next time. See you then.